Have you ever wondered how a large refinery can take raw gold from the mines and remove the impurities, turning it into something absolutely gorgeous, pure 24 karat gold? I was able to film the process at the Perth Mint Refinery, and this is probably one of the best videos I've ever had the opportunity to make. Let's dive in. Buy your gold and silver online from SD Bullion. New customers get gold or silver at spot by visiting sdbullion.com slash new. Stick around after the gold refining because as a bonus, I'm going to show you how they refine silver as well. But with that being said, let's dive in. Tom is saying I probably need two hands to hold this bar. Oh my gosh, that is a heavy bar right there. So how many ounces is this? So that will be, oh, I can tell you an ounce is about 12 kilos for 12 kilos of gold right there. Wow. After oogling over that gold bar, Tom began to explain how they actually go about purchasing the gold from the mines before they refine it. And by the way, all of these bars here do contain gold. And they are not homogenous. So you can see here we've got some parts looking a lot more pure than others. So what we will tend to do is we'll put that and melt it into our furnace and that will give us a homogenous mix. We then take a sample of that mix send it off to our lab. We have an LBA accredited referee status lab on site, and then they will tell us what the percentage of the gold is. Um, and then we will balance that with the weight after melt, and then present it to the mine and say, this is what we're willing to take. Um, at that point, we kind of negotiate back and forth, and then essentially at that point, we will take ownership with the gold. I was told that the melting and sampling of the gold can take just a few hours while the analysis of it takes 12 to 24 so they can get the gold purchased very quickly. Another cool thing that they told me is that every single mine will get their own pot so none of the gold will mix with gold from another mine and this is actually the furnace that they use. The pots go down, they get extremely hot and they do have to use a crane to lift the gold out because it is so incredibly heavy and you could see they're wearing a lot of protective equipment. I was actually standing behind a glass window, so I'm filming it through a window. I was not able to get up close and personal with the gold, unfortunately, but of course it is very hot, so I was okay with that. The molds that they're pouring the gold into are preheated by that flame you can see there on the right. It kind of heats up the molds as they go around, and you want to make sure that the molds are warm enough so a lot of the gold doesn't end up popping out as you're pouring it in they do have that little tray there to catch a lot of the bits of gold that do pop out and of course they sweep the floor and they make sure all of the little bits get remelted and allocated to that particular mine so this gold here is going to be sent to the lab they're going to be able to tell exactly what the purity is and then they can purchase it and begin the first step in refining the gold they call it primary refining the old method utilized chlorine and these big machines to remove impurities but these are being phased out the new machines are called pyrometallurgical advanced melting units or PAM they basically superheat the gold and you can see here is the crucible where they put the gold into then the machine will be enclosed it will boil off the impurities and they can refine the gold to about 95 or 96 percent pure before the gold can go into secondary refining it must be melted down and poured into this unique shape it kind of looks like a gift tag but the gold will become an anode as it is suspended in a highly concentrated hydrochloric acid and nitric acid mix which is heated to about 140 degrees fahrenheit and this is going to eat away the rest of the impurities and leave you with 99.99 percent gold here are some of the cells in action every single single one of those red things does have gold hanging from it and they had quite a big operation here many different places to do the secondary refining so they can get a lot of gold refined every single day it was quite the sight to behold these are the cathodes or the sponge or the sheets of pure gold that collect at the bottom of those cells and this gold is now refined to 99.996 all the way up to 99.99 
and 8% pure. So it is four nines fine gold, but it is not yet ready to be turned into coins or bars. There is still one final step. They load it into the top of this machine. It melts it down one final time. It actually drips into water and it turns into granules or shot. It then needs to be dried off in this machine here. And finally, it tumbles out into these buckets. Now, these buckets here are actually filled with a little over 60 kilos of gold. That's over $8 million in every single one of these buckets. And at the refinery, they use this to make gold bars. This is a fairly automated process. I was surprised to find out that they actually do this at the refinery and not at the mint. But you can see this robot here is loading up pure gold shot into these cups. And they want it to be the exact right weight. So they actually underfill the cups slightly because they're going to add a little bit more gold in the form of gold wire so they do make this wire here at the refinery as well and it cuts off the exact right amount of gold so that they're not putting too much into the one kilo gold bars after the gold is the exact right weight the robot will then go ahead and automatically load it into these graphite molds and not only do they make the one kilo gold bars but they make other gold bars here as well if you've seen the one ounce or the five ounce, the 100 gram gold bars, these are all made on the same machine. It just uses different size molds. So they actually do put a lid onto the mold, which is also made out of graphite, and then it goes off to be melted one more time. These bars came out looking great, but they still need to receive their stamps, which they do on this machine here. I guess you could say it's a lot of pressure to get the job done, but once they're stamped, they look so good. They just need to get their serial numbers and then they're ready to be sold to stackers like you and me. I had so much fun watching and learning about gold refining at the Perth Mint Refinery and this is something that the general public is not allowed to do so I want to say a big thank you to them for welcoming me in and letting me film but let's go learn about silver refining next. The silver comes in from the mines looking like this and just like the gold it needs to be melted down they got to figure out the purity and then buy it from the mines before they can turn it into these anodes. Now, silver does not need to go through the primary refining that gold went through. It goes right into the secondary refining. So after they melt down the silver and put it into these anode shapes, they then put it into a bath of nitric acid and silver nitrate. And it actually eats away the impurities and you're left with pure four nines fine silver. When they pull it from the cells, it looks like this. It's not really a sponge form like the gold was, but I still think it looks pretty cool they do wash it and dry it with these machines before chopping it up and this machine here just spits out the final product it's essentially silver dust i called it pixie dust but i did think it was kind of strange they were putting it in trash cans so i asked tom about that wow look at that so that there is silver crystals that's 99.99 percent .99 pure silver Wow. But it's just in crystalline format. Again, you apply pressure or heat to that, and you'll get a beautiful silver bar. And Tom, you got it here in the trash can, but you know, it's silver. I, I don't know, maybe we could upgrade the bin. <laughs> we, we are upgrading bins. We've got some new ones in back there. So we got the silver in the trash can. It gets loaded up into the hopper here, and it goes up into this machine. And then this is what makes the thousand ounce bars over here. These 1,000 ounce silver bars are sent off to places like the LBMA in London, and some of them can be purchased as well. But not only do they make the 1,000 ounce bars at the refinery, but also the one kilo silver bars. You can see I'm making them here in this machine. The only difference is that they do need to polish them by hand. These are some of the final products right here, all polished up, ready to be stamped. And there you have it. That is how they refine silver and gold at the Perth Mint Refinery. I had such a great time making this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to show you in a follow-up video how the Perth Mint actually takes this refined gold and silver and turns it into beautiful coins.